it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand from the Jasmine Brand is here with me. Mm-hmm. And Brooklyn's own Ooh. Dominique Fishback is here. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> right, no, don't do that. Oh, don't my do bad. Because <laughs> we've been watching Swarm and we don't oh, know what Lord. you like to do that. That's so funny. <laughs> but let's, let's take it back because when I first met you, it was with Angie C. Thomas uh-huh. and The Come Up. Yes. And it was a book club. We did a, like a, a staff, she did a, her book club tour yeah. in New York, and you actually were part of that. Yes, yes. I, I, did, a, I did a reading for her main character, Brie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like an excerpt from the book, and they had me rhyming on stage, and that's why I met you. Yes, indeed. And you were also in The Hate You Give, so yes. obviously you and Angie C. Thomas have a good relationship. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, she's great. I haven't seen her in a while, but she keeps busting out these books, and she's amazing. So I feel like everybody you work with loves you. Oh, because then you did. Um, you worked with Jamie Foxx. Yes, and you did Project Power. I loved you yes. on that. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank mm-hmm. you. And now he's EPing uh, my one woman show. Exactly. So, yeah. so tell me about that conversation because I know that's been important for you. Oh yeah, subvert it. So I wrote my one woman show uh, as my thesis. Excuse me to graduate um, from college, and a lot of times at Pace University, I was the only black person in my class. And in this particular class, it was sociology, and this white boy said, "If African American males in low income communities dressed normally, they wouldn't be stopped by the police." Wow. Yeah, and Ooh, I was like, child. "Yeah, I was so mad," and I was debating with him, and I was stumbling over my words, and I realized that, and I looked around to see if anybody could like talk with me, and nobody could because nobody came from where I came from. Wow. And so I, I said, uh, for an hour and 20 minutes, this predominantly white university is going to have to sit in my truth and the truth of people who come from areas like mine. So I wrote Subverted and with that in mind. Um, and and then when I was doing Project Power, Jamie heard about it. He saw some things from it and was like, it has to be everywhere. And I was like, okay, what do we have to do? He was like, just send me a script and it's done. So then a couple, like, couple of weeks later, I was like, do you need anything else? And then I was like, consider it done. And I was like, okay. Then a whole year went by. We had to do reshoots for uh, for Project Power for a month, mm-hmm. and he didn't bring it up at all. And you didn't bring it up either. No. You were like, I, I, was like, I don't want to sweat you. Yeah, I'm not, yeah I didn't want to sweat <laughs> him. I did my part. I did my part. Yeah. I have been emailing people and writing people about this for so long that, I mean, he said he was going to do it. And then top of 2020, he got his like production company together, and like I was one of the first calls he made and said he wanted to do Subverted. What Amazing. about the student that said that to you? Do you Have you bumped into them or no no i i don't i wouldn't even remember what he looked like to be okay. honest it, it, he <laughs> like to be honest sorry to admit, no but no to be I honest him out. <laughs> no it but it was just i think it was the impetus for me to do it it wasn't about maybe he was just an energy it wasn't about him as a as a person it was right. just about his experiences and his lack of awareness and he's not the only one yeah so yeah, he, he represented yeah yeah, yeah. yeah group, he so. feels like i that. just wondered like he if he sees your success yeah. and all that i just maybe he remembers me maybe he won't yeah, yeah. they should i mean <laughs> Yeah, because honestly, and for you coming from East New York, how do yes. they feel as you being like a hometown hero? Oh yeah, they're very, very excited. <laughs> yeah, they're so excited. I mean, getting all of these like tweets and and videos, and everybody's like Brooklyn in the house, and they're so excited. And I rep Brooklyn so hard, so I'm just proud that they're proud. So let's talk about your background a little because it's not like you have family mm-hmm. that was in the film or television business. Yeah. How did you decide this is what you wanted to do? Yeah, when I was like eight years old, there was a theater company that came to my school and they were doing musical theater. And I was like, man, I got to do that. I auditioned for that company from the age of eight to 10 and I never got in. Mm-hmm. And then when I was 12, I wanted to audition for LaGuardia, but my um, my guidance counselor at IS302 in East New York said that I didn't have the it factor. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Wow! And I cried all the way home. That's crazy. What did to you say fam- that to what, a child? Yeah, what did your family say? Like that? Did you go back and say, "Mom"? It's so funny. I don't know if I did. Okay. I, but I did journal about it, and I have like I I used to do table of contents in my journals. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I have the I have one that says Laguardia is the first page. Like, <laughs> um, but no, I don't remember if I told my mom that. But they, um, she said you didn't have the uh, it factor. The it factor. Imagine yeah. telling that to somebody. Yeah, just and some- then she had on her board like some people just can't. Yeah, I don't know what she was going through. And I don't know why she had that job, but yeah, that's a terrible. She had a lot of problematic things that she'd done even before that. So yeah, is that something that you feel like? Because things happen to us in our lives when we're younger. Do you feel like that actually pushed you even harder, or do you feel like at some point you wanted to just say maybe I don't have it? Oh, def- uh, yeah. I mean, I wanted to do music as well, so that was I wanted to act and sing, and I wanted to be like Aaliyah and things like that. So it it was kind of like maybe. I auditioned for LaGuardia anyway, and I didn't get in. I remember journalists saying, well, I'm just happy. Even if I don't get in, I'm just happy that I was, like, 
brave enough to do it. Right. I didn't get in, so I just ended up going to high school in Brownsville. Okay. Which obviously gave me a whole different experience. <laughs> I played basketball um, throughout high school and um, started acting in a theater company when I was 15. Things happen how they were supposed to. Yeah, right? 100%, because I, I think I'm the artist that I am today because of the experience of staying in East New York and literally staying with my hood um, a little bit longer. And journaling also for you is something you're passionate about. We had yes. a whole conversation yes. about you starting this Making journal and journals. you need to do that. I am working okay. on it. I'm working on it. So talk about journaling and why you feel like that's important and why more people need to do that. Well, honestly, it shows uh, the power of manifestation, really, because I will find entries that I wrote where I say, oh, man, I want to be like Jamie Foxx. Or I want to work with this person and all of a sudden I'm, I'm working with them. Or even this story... <laughs> And, okay, so I used to have a celebrity crush when mm-hmm. I was younger. Who was the celebrity crush? Oh, my God. Wait, let me tell you a story first. <laughs> yeah, let's hear the story. <laughs> okay. And then so we'll I, circle back. Oh, which I have my, can I get my phone? Do you have it? Uh, I'm going to read this letter. Okay, please. This, uh, and I, uh, so I have this um, journal entry. So about, like, December 22nd, 2022, I'm getting dressed, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, I'm getting ready to go to lunch with this person that I had a crush on when I was a, when I was a kid from TV. <laughs> So then I, I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh, I call my friend from back home. Who was my friend from I, when I was like 10. And I'm like, guess who I'm going to lunch with? She says, who? I tell her. She goes, shut the, she goes, shut the F up. Cause I used she to, knows. Yeah, yeah, I used to write letters and put pictures of him in, the <laughs> oh my in his book. So the book. The, now, hold on. Dre is, now I see some similarities. Oh, no. Her, don't now. say Sorry. that. I'm the same thing. Sorry. Okay. Okay. What, what? What's the similarity? We'll, tell we'll me talk so about I could, later. So, no, let me, let me know so I can clarify. No, no. No, let's finish your story. <laughs> yeah, clarify on her. No, I'm not going to read it now because then you're going to think I'm a crazy fan. No, we want to hear it now. Oh, forget it, forget it, forget it. Come on, please. All right, go ahead. <laughs> it's the power of manifestation. Yeah. That's what I that's what I was getting to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So pretty much I say in this letter, I'm not gonna tell you it is now. <laughs> you really <laughs> did. Say, yeah, yeah, you did. definitely did. <laughs> I put dare this actor and I go, I know we don't know each other, but I really like you. You are hot, exclamation point. <laughs> not to be conceited, but I know that if you knew me, I'd be perfect for you because I'm the kind of girl you like. I have personality, a great smile, I'm smart, and funny at times. You never get bored. The only problem is I'm 13 and you're 15. <laughs> um, but if you listen to my homegirl, Aaliyah, age ain't nothing but a number. So please tell me that it's, and it's only two years, and it could be worse like 10. Plus, when I'm 20, you're 22. So please tell me it's not that bad. Love your biggest fan, Dominique. That Aww. is so cute, though. <laughs> I never <laughs> sent it. I never sent it. It was right. just in this journal. No, that's what journaling's for, but, though. Right. But the the best part about the story was this. I wrote that on December 22nd, 2004. And I went to lunch with this person on December 22nd. God is good. 2022. Wow. 18 years later to the day. That's amazing. So I, when I think about manifestation, or I think about journaling. It's like, yeah, it was cool because I remember that I used to talk about this guy, but... But to see it written out and to see the experience um, 18 years to the day was, yeah. like, crazy. Happy birthday, by the way. Today is also your birthday. <gasps> oh, and you're thank working. you. Thank Happy you so birthday. much. Oh, man. Thank you. You're going to make a wish. <laughs> I know. Please let these people stop thinking I'm crazy because I'm a good Oh, actor. my gosh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But that's it, but you have played a lot of roles, and I feel like just already so much variety. And, you know, Judas and the Black Messiah, when I tell you that was like groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. You, you know, for people to see you in that. I'm always like... And even, like, um, there was a movie where you were with your little sister. You yeah, had just got Night a Comes movie. On. Yeah, Night yeah. Comes On. I mean, amazing, Thank the different so roles much. that you've been able to play so far. And before we get into Swarm, because we got to talk about that in a nice. second, you're in the new Transformers movie. Yes. $200 million budget. Uh, where woo. did you guys film that? We filmed it in Montreal, in Canada, mm-hmm. and we filmed it in Peru. Okay. On Machu Picchu, which we're like one of the first and only actors to act on Machu Picchu because it's sacred ground. Mm. So they had a shaman come and bless the production to let us be able to use it. And we couldn't we couldn't uh, drink or eat or anything on the mountain. So you would have yeah. to hike all the way up the mountain. And then if you had to do anything, you had to go all the way back down. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was that experience like for you mentally? Uh, it was it was definitely hard. I mean, we were in the, we were in a jungle where like if you, there was a poison frog, if you get bit, you could die in an hour. Like it was crazy things. Yeah. I mean, they cleared it as much as possible, but it's still the wild and you know, the temperatures up in the mountains is so cold mm-hmm. and it's like 11,000 feet above sea level. So you breathing, breathe. yeah. you have to use the oxygen mask sometimes. Wow. Did you have to train for that? Cause um, I know sometimes when people climb mountains and they do all of that, they have to train. We did not train for that. Okay. Uh, we should you have? Train. Should we have? I think we should have trained for a lot. I, I would have got, gotten uh, like physical training, like at least 
at least five months before I did, mm. and I didn't. And let's be clear, <laughs> you and Anthony Ramos yeah. are starring in that Brooklyn's Own. Yes. What was that like, two Brooklyn people starring in Transformers? Well, movie? the cherry on top is that our characters are actually from Brooklyn as well. Wow. Oh, nice. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. so we, get, we really got to bring our own, like, Brooklyn sauce to it. And it was nice because, I obviously, I knew him from before, and we always talked about wanting to do a project together, like something epic. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't have imagined that it would be this epic as Transformers. And you moved to L.A. So what's a Brooklyn girl in L.A.? How is that? Um, it's cool. Like? I, I tell people that I was looking for ways to soften. I think, obviously, being from East New York and having a harder exterior because of what you had to go through or how to, like, you have to survive, even, in, like, within the industry as well. But going to L.A. allowed me, at this point in my life, to just soften a little bit and kind of peel back the layers and see who I, who I really am. Because I'm such a romantic. That's Aww. like, yeah, you know, you I'm want, like... You want to do a rom-com, right? Oh, yes, please. Okay. That's what I want to do. It's so funny. I watched uh, Lucille Ball growing up and said, I want to be like Lucy. That was like the first bit of acting. I said, man, I got to be like Lucy. And then I did uh, I did Show Me Hero and The Deuce on HBO with David mm-hmm. Simon, who wrote The Wire. Yes. And that legitimately started my whole career. In doing drama, and essentially, like, a lot of the stuff that I acted in wasn't stuff that I would actually watch. I'm watching, like, Vampire Diaries and, like, <laughs> you know, like, the those kind of shows. Uh, maybe, I don't know why. The Deuce was my show, too. Like, you that's, you. that's when I discover who you were in yeah. The Deuce, because I was, I kind of fell in love with your character. And a lot of the characters Thanks. on there, how, yeah. what was the, what was, uh the hardest part about playing that or was there any yeah. hard parts about playing that role uh, you know it's so long ago I, like sometimes after the fact after you film something you could just remember all of, like the good things so I'm sure there were mm-hmm. moments that were hard but um, ultimately I loved my I loved my cast I was really honored because I did Show Me Hero with David and um, then he says, I don't know if you heard about my new show that I'm working on. I was like, no. He said, well, it's uh, it's called The Deuce. It's, it's a, I, I wrote a role with you in mind but it's not a role you take just to take it because, well, it's about the rise of the porn industry in the yeah. 1970s in Times Square. So if you, you should read the scripts, and if you don't want to do it, it's no harm, no foul. Yeah. Um, and that really meant a lot to me that he would say that because it allowed me to say, okay, if I don't want to do this role, it's, it's not going to mess up my relationship with David Simon. Right. Yeah. He had the wherewithal already to know, hey, this is a young actress, this is a big ask. I respect her anyway, so let me just say it like this. Right. Okay. You know, and it, and it was empowering. That was thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great because, and we saw this too, when you did Swarm, mm-hmm. you initially were offered the role of Marissa. Yes. And you said, no, I actually would like to do this other role. Yes. So for the courage for you to even be able to say that because sometimes I know it's not an easy business to be in Mm -hmm. and an opportunity like this comes and you're like okay let's just go Mm -hmm. and it's still a great role Yeah. by the way oh Marissa yeah Marissa's role was still a great role Mm -hmm. too but what made you say that like how did you know this is what my goal is yeah I mean I go back to that girl who wrote in the journal my younger self like when she saw actors she said this is what I want to do there was Monster Charlize Theron there was Boys Don't Cry Hilary Swank you know uh, Heath Ledger and the Joker and just being able to be like if I got an opportunity to act and be something so far from what I am. You know, the char- I love all of my characters, and they're, they're all different in, in certain ways, but they're also easy for, easier for me to tap into mm-hmm. because it's a place where I gen- gen- generally can live. But Dre is so far removed. Yes. So it allowed me to see what I can do as an actor and stretch myself. So when, you know, they offered me that role, I was like, okay, thank you, but I knew that I didn't want to do it because... Mm. Uh, it, it does take a lot and I knew that I was ready one to lead a project mm-hmm. and that I could do it so I had to say uh, I, I'm i sorry I appreciate you guys offering me this but I want to do this one and then got on the phone with Donald and, and he was like "Like, why do you want to do that one and I said well I don't want to catch up to myself as an actor what mm-hmm. does that mean that means I don't want to I don't even want to know what I'm going to do next <laughs> like like why? Why would I? Why do? Why limit myself? And he said the reason why he thought of me as Marissa is because of the roles that I've played. Right. right. See, it's because exactly you're warm. Your point. You're warm. It, you know. You're loving. We recognize you. We do. We yeah. feel like your family. So that's why I init- That's why he's like. That's why I initially thought of you as Marissa. And now I have to just see what the world looks like if you were not Marissa and you were Dre. Who would be your Marissa if you were actually Dre? 
And then we got Chloe Bailey, who's amazing, and she's so beautiful inside and out and, and, and sensitive and loving and just such a beautiful and great person. I'm so blessed that, that I could ask for something more and get even more by getting a friendship. Did you ask, first. did you ask, suggest her or they were already, no, that was already uh, on the... He, he kind of, they came up with that themselves okay. after I had said I wanted to do Dre. There's um, a lot of special guests and the Billie Eilish, yeah. this is her first role, yes, right? Yes, Acting. Yes. How was that for you with her? Because you're the veteran uh-huh, uh-huh. when it comes to that. So yeah. how was that experience? I was so proud of her because she was very, um, she didn't have any air about her. She was very like, uh, wanting to learn about what was going on. She respected the craft. She had to honestly learn things really fast, and mm. she picked it up so fast. And I had been working, had done, what, four episodes already because we shot one of them out of order. And and it's a lot of work. It's set, like 17-hour yeah. days sometimes. I'm yeah. um, doing all of this week after week. And so you want somebody who comes and can bring it too. I'm thankful when I get scene partners that cuz I'm going to do what I got to do like right. and to be to be like able to play off of another actor and for her to deliver the way she did I just I love the scene and she's such a nice and warm person so I just feel I feel blessed How do you prepare for a role like Dre? Yeah. What do well, you do to prepare for that? So after I asked for the role he said, "Well, if that's the role you want, that's the role you get." Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't have That's to. That's how we bring it. Yeah, I didn't have to audition for it or fight for it, any of those things. And I've been used to, like, generally in life, like, fighting for something. Um, so I was like, oh, shoot. But once he said that, I was like, do I really want the role? <laughs> like, why did I ask for this role? Like, what? I don't even know what. Like, I read three episodes. There's still four more to go. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like? What will I have to do? And initially, they told us to watch this movie called The Piano Teacher. Right. And that pian- that movie is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I, it really made me consider the type of actor that I thought I was. Am I brave? You know, am I? would I take the opportunity? And so once it was given to me, I had to pray about it. And I prayed and I said, God, if it's not in alignment, for what you see from my life, then please take it away easily. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go full force towards it. Right. And then I had to journal and identify anything that gave me pause, made me afraid, and see if it was actually something that really was in me that I was afraid. Like, for, like not afraid of and said something inside of me, but, like, if it's something that really doesn't sit well with my spirit, then I have to address it. But if it's for fear of perception okay. or jokes right. Or whatever it's gonna be, then I'm not doing a service. I'm doing a disservice to myself, and to the the opportunity and the gift that God gave me to be here and say okay. And now you know I have all of these people messaging saying we've never seen a, a character like this. Never, right? And you yeah. know horror is my favorite genre. So when oh, I first man. saw that you were doing this, I was really excited. And I was like, the day it came out, I was like, I'm going home tonight. Yes. <laughs> to start watching Swarm, and you, you killed it Thank in that you. role. And I saw they had to have people on set also. Yeah, I asked for that. Mm-hmm. I asked for a therapist because. Um, when we did Judas and the Black Messiah, it actually the the day we shot the assassination scene was a day was like the 50th anniversary of the, the assassination of Chairman Fred. Damn. So energetically, it was very heavy. And I remember that night before I had we had to do the scene, I felt so anxious, and I just I was like. I felt like something bad was going to happen. So I did it around myself, Dom, nothing bad is going to happen to Daniel. Like, I had to keep telling myself. I realized that my body couldn't differentiate between my, what I made my mind believe. Mm-hmm. Right. And if, and if that happened by being love, then what could possibly happen with doing something like that's yes. heavy? Right. So I said, and then when we did that scene, we were all like, man, we should have had a therapist on the set. So once I knew I was doing Swarm, I was like, well, we need a therapist on the set. Not just for me, but for the other actors and the crew members because we don't know how people are going to be triggered. Did you have sessions afterwards or in between with the therapist on set, or you just it was just some, someone that know that you visually they were there? Oh yeah, we talked sometimes. She would come into my trailer and talk to me. Sometimes I wouldn't talk about anything. We just have lunch and talk about other stuff. Mm-hmm. But I I had my therapist too that I I talked to, uh-huh. um, and trying to make time and contracts for actors to have their therapy session because we all know that the the schedule for shooting is not consistent. Right. So how do you make room for mm-hmm. your mental health while you're shooting? Yes. Right. Because at the end of the day, everybody is going to move on. The director is going to go direct something else. The crew is going to go do something else. But the actor is going to be left with whatever they took with them from a character. Right. And so we have to start making time and space for actors to be human and get taken care of while Absolutely. they're doing the work. So, so yeah, so... um. I had that. Okay. How, what about people's reactions to you since then? Because uh, I can just imagine people sending you messages and looking at you for real like you are <laughs> this person. Well, I get me- <laughs> I see messages where people are like, oh, you know, she did her thing because I don't want to. I don't want to meet Dom in the street or like <laughs> I want to know what Dom is like. 
<laughs> um, in, in real life. And, I mean, that's cool. Right. Do you I'm think any cool. of this would have happened if her sister wouldn't have committed, wouldn't have committed suicide? On her? um, what was that? Her, was that her sister or her friend? It's her first. Well, you gotta. I don't okay. want to give oh, any spoilers. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But I mean, it's out now. So I'm not there's full. a lot of articles about yeah. it, and it's been out. But okay. yeah. do you think any of that? Because I I didn't know that at first either. I was trying mm-hmm. to figure it out. Okay. Mm-hmm. But do you think that would have happened still? Like, or you think that's uh, what made her? Snap? That's definitely that's definitely what made her snap. Mm-hmm. Um. Would have happened still? I mean, there would be no show if she didn't right. because she wouldn't have snapped. But I think she definitely lost her her grip on reality. I think I think when she went to the apartment at like the end, I think she was looking for somebody who knew Marissa the way she knew her and could give her that that same kind of familiarity, but she couldn't find it. What kind of saving grace do we have for a character like Dre? Because it is trauma mm-hmm. that she's experienced yeah. in her life to make her act that way. So for you, yeah. when you dig into that character, yeah. where do you find like the humanity in her? Um, you know, that's, that's my main objective always. That's why I had a journal as myself, because I had to remove any fears or judgments that I have of the character. Because you will not do a disservice, you will not do a service to your character if you do that, and that's what you learn at like acting one hundred and one. You have to have be a clean slate so you could be a clear vessel. So, really, um, I didn't study anything outside of outside of Dre. I literally said, "What is the universal thing that I understand and that the audience will understand?" Love. She loves her sister. Right. She loves Marissa and Nigel, and she loves Nigel. <laughs> She does. She were, loves it. Were you surprised that there was such a big reaction about your character online? Because I feel like this is the, the first time where it's been such a big reaction about with any of your work that you've yeah, done. Yeah. Were you surprised? Um, I wasn't surprised, which is why I think, which is why I had to like make room in a, when I first said I wanted to do the role and had to journal. Because it's going to, like, either you, you might love or hate the show, but people are talking, regardless yeah, yeah. of if you love or hate it, yeah. people are talking about it. You're going to have an opinion about the characters. And this is my first time leading a project, but not only leading the project, producing, not only producing, but, you know, a lot of times with series, you have you have a A, B, C storyline. You follow mm-hmm. other characters. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't follow any other characters. It's one storyline. Right. So that means I'm in almost every frame of every single show ep- episode. Right. So that means that it's literally going to be my face and yeah. my life. That was a lot of work. It was yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, is, but it's is, a lot of reward, too, because yeah. people are really, really enjoying it. Is there any... Go ahead. I was going to say there were also a lot of think pieces. Oh, yeah. Are there things that you're like, okay, y'all are like doing too much? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I knew there are lots of things. Yeah. So many on every little thing. Like yeah. the backlash that Chloe Bailey got for uh-huh. doing that scene in uh-huh. the beginning. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even think, I understood that people would want to see that because everybody's like, yeah, that was yeah. the first thing. Everybody wanted to see the sex scene. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Like that started turning. But yeah. I was like, why are people mad that yeah. she did that? I mean, we're, it's, we're actors at the end of the day. Right. Like, acting you took a role that was part of the role and yeah and she's and, also and like not... and also really i mean i think for people who's watching it with a and like an artistic eye or just a like a, a human eye you move past that and you see that she is a brilliant actress mm-hmm. right that scene that dre and and uh marissa have when she wants to leave is one of the most heartbreaking scenes, yeah. scenes oh, in that, yeah. in that I show so bad. Yeah. and after that we were legitimately like shaken up after that scene you know, we I, I don't know. We really like transferred energy while we was doing while we were doing that scene, and it's such beautiful work. She came in and, and lent herself to Marissa. In order for us to even remotely care about Dre and her mission, you have to have a Marissa that you care about. Yeah, and that's not easy to do in one episode. Right? Because imagine you wake up and you didn't get these calls. Mm-hmm. And you're devastated because you feel like you could have prevented something right. yeah. from happening. But I also said like there's a sensitivity that Chloe as as a, as a person has, and she brings it to the character in that you know a lot of times like when growing up you could be in a friend group, and it might be that friend that's always kind of picking at you, mm-hmm. right. and your mom like I don't know if that's your friend because why they, you know. Yeah. And Dre is very easy for people to pick on, right? But Marissa does not do that, yeah. And that's she a, that's a testament it. to Chloe. Because Chloe didn't pick moments to be annoyed with Dre and like pick at her when yeah. she could have as yeah. an actor. Right, everything was love. Everything right, was I got it. Now I want to go back and look at it again. Yeah, watch from, it from your point of view. Watch it. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's um, or I don't even know if you care. Do you think there's any big misconception about Dre, that character that you see online that like, you think there's it's a, a misconception? I mean, people think she killed Marissa. Mm-hmm. I yeah. I mean, I don't think she killed Marissa. <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I don't think I I I did for a second mm-hmm. think that because I also feel like watching it the delusion 
And then you're like, well, maybe that did happen. But then I realized that's not what happened as it went on. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I don't think so. I think people think think people are talking about it, which makes it cool. My friend told me like, oh, I was at this pregame and everybody's just talking about Swarm. And so that's dope to have people just continuously talking about the show. And, And I think that's what the creatives wanted, to like have people just talking. Nothing in art is perfect. Everything is subjective. So and, you just have to like kind of see what you like and see what you don't like and just and talk about it and then move on or and make your own art or like you know <laughs> make your own art. Would right. you be interested in a, a prequel or a sequel? No. <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You, even... you don't want to go back to that character at all. <laughs> no, I don't need to. It's unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. And I saw Donald Glover getting backlash uh-huh. too um, yeah. for even creating this. What was your experience like working with Donald Glover? Uh, I mean, he only did the pilot. Right. You know, so uh, when I when I wanted to to do this role, I like I said, I wanted to do it because I wanted to stretch myself as an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't come with a lot of like, oh, do it like this, do it like that. It was like show up on the set and and do what I do, and then we'll move from there. Okay. And so you know that was my my experience. Are you uh, able to get feedback on certain things that the character says? Like I think she would do this instead, or I think she was. Did say- I get feedback? Yeah. Oh, that's all I did. Okay. <laughs> like like it's very important to me. It was you know there was a lot of things, and that's why I wanted to be a producer on the show. Like I didn't I don't write the show, I don't edit the show. Right. You know you don't have control over that as an actor. But for me, I can only approach stuff the way I approach everything and that's the way I approach Dre is the way I approach Deb and and, uh, Judas is the way I approach Elena and Transformers is the way I approach Robin and Ptolemy Gray and Project Power like I I do it the same way and it's all humanity first Okay. because if you don't have that as an actor for your character then you have nothing has the Beehive responded to this? Because is it all the speculation? Yeah, I don't. That this is I mean, like you're talking Beyonce, about the, the, the like fans? online. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I just been getting a lot of love and support, and so that's what I. You know, somebody asked me if I was afraid of that. I said, "Well, I don't manifest that. I mean, I manifest <laughs> right. love. So, right. I mean, and that's what I've been getting. You know, I've been getting a lot of a lot of love. So I'm. I'm. That's that's what I experienced. Do you have any yeah. artists that you really love? I mean, not as much as Drake, but is, but you know, is there an artist that you want like, to go hard for? I don't. Uh, see, I was saying I'm like probably the worst. Stand the first concert I ever saw was in 2018. Oh, really? What was that? It was Jay Z. It was 444. And okay. you to play Jay Z's mom. mom yeah. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first one I ever saw. I don't think I, you know, I could look at TV and say, oh man, I want to be an actor, but I couldn't look at TV when I was younger and say, oh shoot, Michael Jackson might be in New York City. Right. That I could, mom, that can you take thing. me to it? It just didn't cross my mind that I'd be able to see these people in real life. So I had, of course, I had posters on my wall. Right. Uh, me too. Uh, Aaliyah, <laughs> Eminem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had Eminem, so I, I would rap the whole third verse of Stan, so that's ironic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have like B2K and things like that and like yeah. I also feel like growing up in New York, we do run into people sometimes. Like, even when I was younger, mm-hmm. sometimes I would go places and be like, oh, shoot, there goes such and such. Yeah. Sometimes in other places, you don't run into people yeah. like you do, mm-hmm. you know, in New yeah, York. Yeah, I don't what? even know that I ran in. I didn't really run into many people. I don't know if I was not in the right, like, area. <laughs> right circle. Because you but, might uh, could randomly be walking around Manhattan and you're like, oh, this is, your celebrity's just walking down the block yeah. by themselves. I remember, I did meet when I was like 16 years old, I met uh, Ben Athlete. Oh, yeah. that's huge. Because <laughs> I, <was> the- <laughs> I was in this theater company mm-hmm. called MCC, and in order to act, you had to write your own stuff. So we had this rehearsal in this um, this space, and it was different rehearsal rooms. So uh, they're telling me, oh, like, they're like, oh, ben, we're about to start rehearsal. Like, Ben Affleck is in this room. I'm like, oh, okay, so what? And then Blake Lively, because I was a gossip girl, <laughs> fanatic. Like, yeah, hold on, okay. Blake Lively, Blake Lively <laughs> walked in. I was like, <laughs> and, and like, I was staring at her, and she's like, and, like, and, then, and then I was like, they, she went into the room, and I was like, oh, my God, that was Blake Lively. And they're like, who? And I'm like, Blake Lively's from Gossip Girl. So, so then after we go into the rehearsal room, uh, rehearsal happened, and I can't think about nothing else but that Blake Lively is in the other room. And then we get out, uh, and I go, like, listen by the door. I'm like, because I had this monologue that I wrote about loving Gossip Girl. So I was ready to perform it for her and everything. Ooh, I was that ready. Was amazing. Um, um, but I put my ear to the door, and then this guy, like a, a, like a PA opens the door. And I'm like, no, actually, sorry, it's not the PA. Uh, so a guy opens the door, and I look up, and it's Ben Affleck. And he's really tall, and I'm like, hi. And he's like, hi. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I was like, yeah. And then the PA came, and I was like, is Blake Lively still in there? He's, he's like, like, I don't care about Ben Affleck. <laughs> he's like, did ba- I was like, is Blake Lively still in there? And he's like, um, yeah. And I said, I want to do my Gossip Girl monologue for her. He was like, mm, that's weird. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
I didn't get to do my gossip grandma. That's, That's weird. <laughs> and I saw you posted that you were taking the train around Brooklyn yeah. like last year. This is before because you're like, okay, after this, <laughs> yeah, I don't knows? know if I'll be able to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So how has that been now that Swarm has come out, Judas yeah. and the Black Messiah is out, mm-hmm. Project Power is out, yeah. Transformers on the way. Yeah. What is the change that you've been seeing as far as people's reactions to you? I think I think Swarm is is the biggest ones because it's been everywhere in yeah. L.A. Yeah. It's like one like has one of the biggest billboards in L.A. On, on sunset and like oh wow that's and amazing. like all through the airport it's just like there'll be rolls and rolls of like my face <laughs> so how does that so, feel um you know it's funny I've been getting like the the special treatment so they've been taking me around the back so I actually haven't been able to see it okay right. but people ascended to me I'm really excited about that it was it was like it's cool I've been yeah. working at it for a, a really long time and yeah you deserve uh, it thank you. honestly even from the beginning when I first met you and then seeing like your acting ability it's something very special about you and I hate that, I that. a teacher would even have told you that yeah. when you and they but were maybe, dead wrong but dead wrong. dead wrong but maybe that pushed you even your subcon you may subconsciously have pushed you I mean you don't I don't, know it, you know who, who that's knows that's awful yeah, though who knows, who knows? Yeah. So you, we'll never know cause <laughs> guess what it happened right so congratulations Thank and I know you so you're much. having a big birthday bash it's gonna be crazy yes I am <laughs> I can't <laughs> so, wait yeah, so thank happy birthday again, thank you and for thank the you cupcakes. so That's much. So nice. Thank you guys. And I know Anthony said he's going to do a screening for Transformers in Brooklyn. Anthony oh, Ramos. Oh yeah, That's the plan. He didn't tell me that. No, he's Anthony been talking Ramos. about it. He's like, I told them. No, I, I told him like we should do like a block party or something. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, got, like I feel like it should be like a, a like a real Brooklyn vibes. Well, let me know. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Dominique Fishback, congratulations on everything. Honestly, I'm so excited and happy for you. And by the way, your looks always kill it. Oh, thank you. When it comes to the fashion, thank you. I look at everything you wear all the time, and I'm like killing it. So amazing. Thank Thank you. you. And I can't wait to get these journals when you put your journals out. It's happening. It's happening. All right. Thank you guys. Way up with Angela Yee. Way up.